Hey everyone, Matt from Workshop Tinkerers here. So, I figured I'm almost done with my upgrades. I've got one more part really to do that I want to do. Um, parts for my main printer finally started arriving from China, so I don't got much longer I'm going to be working on this until that one is up and running. <coughs> Excuse me. But right now I'm trying to get as much... I'm trying to get a little bit more improvement by doing the tension, which I think I'm going to do tomorrow night. I'm going to do a live stream. More, most likely it's either going to be tomorrow night or Saturday night. Probably tomorrow night. Friday night. Maybe tonight, depending on exactly when this video gets up. But I've got... The most recent update I've done with this thing is... I've got a $5 hot end on here. It's an E3D clone it's an e3d light clone v6 light clone <clears throat> or e3d light six that's it either way it's it's got the early v6 block heat block on it without the thermistor cartridge it's just a normal thermistor and it's got a uh, the only thing that's really different is this uh, the Bowden coupler is actually a screw in style instead of the nice easy push to fit thing that E3D likes to use. But I figured, so two things. I got a couple of benchies here. This one's with the E3D hot end. This one's with the non E3D hot end. And <clears throat> actually the non E3D came out better <laughs> but that was because I, I wanted to point this out and oh crap I had the piece of plastic in my hand like 30 seconds ago or well two and a half minutes ago 30 seconds before I started the video <laughs> and it's missing I, I put it down and it disappeared I don't know where it went well it doesn't matter but anyways um, the E3D hot, the light hot end, I had removed the um, Bowden tubing so I could use it on the printer here, right here, uh, and have the full feed into it. And I guess at some point I didn't feed it in the whole way, and because of that, I uh, had a nice little slug of plastic stopping more plastic coming out. I'm still looking around for it. That's why my voice is probably changing in volume quite a bit which is fantastic. Yeah, it's gone. I had it in my hand a couple minutes ago. I put it down. I shouldn't put things down is the moral of that story, I think. <laughs> Anyways, but because of that, the actual clone one actually works slightly better, but that is my fault, not the hot end's fault for the E3D. So I figured I'd do an apples to apples compare original stock parts as upgraded as I could get with the uh, uh, structural the cable and everything and then what I have it right now so if you can see it there are little bumps and lines and stuff every time I had to change a direction there's a bit of slop from the gears internally to the steppers. I've been chasing that down and then generally just speaking there was just inconsistencies and stringing and stuff. So this one I did this morning there's a little bit of the layer issues that's uh, structural in slop so uh, these little arms here aren't a hundred percent rigid or uh, movement free I've read on the Facebook group people have been putting rubber bands on the screws to help reduce that slop a bit I'll probably get that once I get some rubber bands I don't have any right now but side by side you can see so the silvers as it is now bronze is as it was before or copper or whatever color this is um, the little ridges are gone by the way, I print this. I printed this one 10 degrees hotter than this one. I have much less stringing issues because I could actually I I had to really dial up the retractions to get the uh, to compensate for the Bowden tube. 
but the retractions for this original one just weren't obviously weren't doing the job I need to bump it up so to compensate for the slop it would appear so that would be something that people need to look at for their stock printers see if they can adjust the retractions that should help with the stringing so you can do it a bit hotter get better layer adhesion uh, everything else and if you up the retractions you should get rid of the uh, little bumps and stuff and actually I can see some slight slicing artifacting on this one which is what I want to see so that means that you're getting to the point where your slicer is holding you back not the printer and slicers can be bumped up a bit this one I definitely see some slicing artifacting not nearly as much as I should but I see it on the inside for sure I'm hoping you can see some of it you can see a little bit of bumps it's not perfect but I could still do more with the frame and I'm just not going to other than I'll, I'll do the rubber bands I'm hoping putting a bit more tension on the belts will do a huge huge amount of work so <clears throat> that's all my update today is five dollar e3d clone hot end from uh, Alibaba there's one for 360 I think I saw was the cheapest shipped I just found the five dollar one first works great I didn't even have to adjust the uh, offset at all the Z offset is the exact same height as my e3d light everything exact same point to the point one millimeter same height but uh, that works the only thing only downside to any of it is uh, I did have to splice a couple wires onto the fan for this because the fan wire stops about where my well if I move the camera up about where my hand is and obviously I needed it longer I did some uh, <clears throat> Try to remember, I think it was barrel splices, the same ones NASA use where you take two wires and you wrap them around each other in such a way that they can't pull apart before you solder them, then you solder them. And then I did a couple layers of uh, shrink tubing to make it so it works on the thing. So the only other thing that most people might not be able to do easily that I've done is these little jumper splices. These are for the end stop. So the default E3D end stop is three wires the outside and inside the ramps is a two wire together and these don't actually fit I tried them you might if you remove one of these pins and put it into the center you might be able to just barely get it fit but for the most part this solved me a lot of issues making these little jumpers but if you don't have the crimps and the supplies I have the crimps um, it makes it very difficult but that's it for today. Hopefully sometime this weekend. I think, as I said, tomorrow, Friday night, I will be doing a live stream while I work on modeling. Um, I'm going to be figuring out the slack I have on these belts and then building some sort of cap for the top to allow tensioning to happen at each of the three towers. That will allow me to get that last little bit of speed back because right now the springs just aren't strong enough. So, uh, look for, I hope to see people tomorrow or tonight or whenever this video actually gets on the, on the web. And uh, expect another video once I get all the, get the initial design, print it, initial tweak, print, tweak, print. It usually takes me three to four tries. I am also working on a carrier with a fan. But uh, with the retractions and everything, you almost don't need it. I know everyone's using fans just stuck on the side, but up the retractions. So you, you get back to the point where you spin those motors too fast. They're going to just jump instead of actually doing anything. So the original might not ever work. The new one does. Oh, my Bowden extruder does. So... Um, I hope to have some new parts coming soon, which can work for anybody, not just people who've done upgrades, but stock, hopefully. Um, but we'll see what we can do uh, when I do that live stream, hopefully. Anyway, anyways, thanks everyone so much for watching. Like, subscribe, yada, 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 and keep tinkering. 
See you next time.